What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell for me so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers. I also do not offer an investment trading program. Be careful on Instagram as well. A lot of scammers there cloning my Instagram account and then contacting you guys by DM offering you investment trading services. Once again, guys, that's not me. Please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble, it's going to give you up to 12 free stocks. When you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put at least one penny in that account. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks. You're also going to get a world-class self-directed brokerage app, which gives you two features that I really enjoy. The first feature is $5 fractional share trading. The second feature is automatic investing. So if you're interested in that Weeble offer, there's a link down in the description box of the video. Click on that link, open up your new brokerage account today, go get that free stock, go get that free money. Guys, I'm getting ready to make a huge, huge investment. Buying a new home. I'm getting ready to sign the contract tomorrow. And then my money is going to go hard. I got to put up a nice little chunk of change in deposit so that the sellers know I'm serious about this deal. And then we'll start the due diligence and then working towards hopefully closing this deal. Now I'm gonna be getting a loan for the bulk of the purchase price. You guys know I talk a lot about leveraging banks in order to obviously get the very best opportunity you can to hold on to your cash so then you can take your cash to make more cash. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I'm going to get me a loan. And that loan is going to be for a million bucks. The purchase price on this particular home is going to be 1.375 million bucks. So I'm going to be putting 375K down and then I'm going to go get me a loan for a million. And I've already started that process, like I mentioned, and it should be a fairly smooth process couple of things that I made sure I did before I went to any lender. Number one thing I wanted to do was go check my credit report, right? I wanted to make sure there were no surprises out there. And the reason I know there are no surprises is because I keep a freeze on all three of my major credit bureau reports, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experion. So I keep a credit freeze so that no one no retailer, no creditor, nobody can go put any inquiries or better yet, no scammer can grab my personal information and try and create accounts for me that don't belong to me. So that's one thing I do do. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why I know my credit is, is good and ready to go. And, and there shouldn't be any surprises. And there were no surprises. The next thing I made sure I did was got all my financial information together for my lender. So I want to get my tax returns together. I want to print out all my bank statements, all my brokerage statements. I want to also make sure all my information for my income streams that are coming in. I want to make sure that the lender understands exactly where those income streams come from. So again, put a profit and loss statement together, outlining where each of those income streams comes from. And I back that up with the tax returns, right? So that way, it's easy for the lender to see, okay, here's what this guy has done historically, but here's what this guy has done this year in 2022. I don't want no misunderstandings with my lender because the easier I make it for my lender, the easier the process will be for me to get approved. And then the third thing I do is I make sure with the seller, I set a timeline to when we close. So of course, every seller wants to close right now, but, but I, don't, uh -uh, I don't do that. 
I know how long it takes for this lending process to take place. So I want to give myself at least 60 days to close. Now, every seller won't go for that, right? And then as a buyer, you got to make that decision. But in my case, I got to stick to that because I'm borrowing a million bucks and it's going to take 30 days just to go through the process to get approved. And then I got to get an appraisal done, right? Or, the, or my lender is going to want an appraisal done. I'm going to want a property inspection done. Even though it's brand new construction, I still want a property inspection done so that I have a peace of mind that everything is 100% on that house before I move into it. And I recommend you do the same thing if you're looking at properties, guys. The biggest thing you can do for yourself to help you out so you don't have headaches down the road, get yourself a home inspection. And you pick the home inspector. Don't let the seller pick it. Don't let the real estate agent pick it. You pick it. You make sure you're leading that team, right? No, nothing wrong with getting advice from your team, but at the end of the day, you're the leader of that team. You make the decision on everything that happens in your real estate transaction. At least that's the way I roll. So yeah, man, pulling the trigger on this $1.375 million house, it's gorgeous, man, right? It's 3,800 square feet. Um, it, it has the capacity in the garage space to fit at least six cars because the garage ceiling is about 14 feet. So it's easy to get lifts in there so that you can have one car at the bottom, one car at the top, and you can double that on the one garage. And then you got the single garage on the other side over here where you can also do the same thing. So listen, man, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, but I do want to get y'all's opinion though. Is it the right time to be making that type of purchase? So I'm asking you guys to drop some comments and let me know what your thought process is. Just put yourself in that situation, right? If you were in that situation, and, and it, regardless of the dollar amount, just if you was in a situation where you were getting ready to pull the trigger on a brand new house, it, would it be the right time for you to do that? Because I had to have that conversation with myself, right? It's like, oh, okay, man. Yeah, y you've done well. You, you, you got some reserves. You, you, you know, you, you, you're in a position where you can pull this thing off. You got multiple streams of income coming in. So you have to worry about, can you handle the debt service? Because you can. But is it the right time? And then I had to think to myself, you know something? I bust my butt for the last 25 years to put myself in a position to do things like this. Why not do it? You, you can't always worry about down the road, right? I can't, and that's one of the things as part of my conservative nature, especially when it comes to my finances, it's always I'm thinking ahead, right? I'm thinking, shoot, man, I buy this thing and, and let's say I close in January, 2023. But, but in June of 2023, what if, what if, what if the real estate market takes? Then, then, then I'm going to be upside down in this house. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm happy I think that way because it has helped me in, in the past to avoid certain things. But I think at this stage in my life, I just want to have personal enjoyment. And I think this house will, 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 will put me in a situation where I can say, you know something? I've always wanted this type of property. And for 25 years, I've worked my butt in order to try to get this type of property. Move forward. Now, I'm moving forward because, once again, I'm not worried about not being able to pay for the house. I'm more worried about what if I'm upside down in the house, you know, in six months. But one thing I know about real estate, especially real estate when you buy it in good locations, if you hold it long enough, man, it will always recover. I bought a property in 2006, right before the great 2008 real estate meltdown and, and recession. I bought that house at the top of the market, guys. And, and, and guess what? As soon as I bought it, a year and a half later, the market went to crap. But I held that property for about 13 years. Had a tenant in it the whole time, but it right-sized itself. And now, today, that property is worth 100 k more than what I actually paid for it. And I basically broke even on the property and sold it to, to a family member, but it came back. Nobody would have thought that property would have came back and got itself back to its original purchase price, even from the boom days of 2006 and 2007. 
that property came back. So my point is, if you're going to buy a piece of real estate and you feel comfortable staying in that real estate five, seven, 10 years, or buying a piece of real estate better yet, and, and as an investment property, and as long as you're holding that investment property, you keep a tenant in that investment property, and it's in a good location where people have a desire to live, it'll always come back, man. If you want those 12 free stocks from Weeble guys, click on that link down in the description box, open up that new Weeble account today, go get that free stock, go get that free money. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, smash the like button. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace. Today's video is sponsored by my company, RF Financial Consulting. And in my company, I work with individuals just like you through financial mentoring and coaching sessions. And in those one hour sessions, we talk about strategies to help you get to your financial freedom, whether it be through real estate investing, stock market investing, creating additional streams of income, credit card arbitrage, or starting and growing a business. If that's something that you might be interested in, there's an email address in the description box of the video. Send me an email and let's discuss if I'm the right fit for you.